Good morning, and welcome to St. Mark's. That usually means something, something com completely different than what it does today, um, but I still very much mean it. Welcome to St. Mark's. As much as we love our church building and we love coming here and we love remembering all of the baptisms and weddings and funerals and moments and crash services that happen right here, um, this building is not the church. Uh, we are the church that happens to sometimes meet in this building. And so whether we meet here or we meet virtually uh, from our living rooms, uh, looking at our smartphones or our tablets or our computers or our televisions or whatever, we are still the church gathering. I have a few announcements that I'm going to do up front. So the first is uh, you may have seen that uh, at the very beginning of this that um, there is a website, stmarksbr.org slash bulletin. And so there's a bulletin for this service. If you are walk, looking at a computer and you got a second window you can open up, you can do that. If you can't, don't worry about it. You really don't need it, but it might just help you sort of like see uh, what it is we're doing and where it is we're going. We're basically doing a modified, simplified version of the liturgy of the word, what we do in church right up to, um, to the piece. Uh, I'll just reiterate this. Everything at St. Mark's is closed. We are closed. Um, the rummage sale is canceled. Obviously, the brunch today is canceled. Everything is closed. Um, you are going to be able to tell as we go through this that uh, I have a dry cough and uh, I'm fine. I feel fine. I don't have a fever. I'm totally fine but I'm not taking the chance with anyone else's life, and so I don't want you here. Don't come. You can call me. You can text me. You can email me. My phone number is 301-697-9139. Uh, you probably can't see this, but there's like a recording studio here, and I have a desk right here. I'm basically working from inside the church, and um, so we're, we're like, we're doing it, but we're doing it uh, as uh, far away from each other as we can. So don't come by, but call if you need anything. If you need something from the church, call the church office, and we'll be checking uh, emails and voicemails and whatnot from home. I am urging everyone at St. Mark's to reach out to people at St. Mark's. As I keep saying, um, in this time of social distancing where we have to stay apart from each other, we are probably going to need each other and our faith more than ever. And so we can't do it in the traditional ways, but we can do it in the non-traditional ways. And so if you have on your phone uh, or on your computer the church directory, um, call someone on the church list. Someone you know, someone you don't know. We're going to have plenty of time on our hands while you're you know, in the middle of streaming Miss Maisel. Uh, between episodes, pick up the directory and call somebody. And uh, if you don't know them, be like, hey, I see you're in the St. Mark's directory. I'm a member of St. Mark's too. I'm just calling to see how you are and what's going on. And if you're super brave, you could even say, hey, can I pray for you? Is there anything I can do for you? And maybe they'll say, can I pray for you in, in return? But I really, like, every day, call someone uh, in the church family so we can still stay connected. Mike and Noel McCormick are offering to go pick up groceries for anyone who needs them, people who are worried about their immune systems being compromised and don't want to go out in public at all. If you are willing to help with that effort or if you need groceries and like really and truly, uh, either contact Mike or contact the church and we'll put you in contact with Mike. I'm going to be changing up the daily uh, Lenten email a little bit. I wrote almost everything while I was on my couch recovering from surgery. And just right now, um, it just doesn't feel as authentic because the world's changed. So I'm gonna, you're gonna see, it, you're still gonna get it every day, but you're gonna see that it's gonna change a little bit. We are also doing morning prayer every single day right here at 10 o'clock. 
every day uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. And again, we're gonna have a lot of time on our hands. And so if we could just pause for like 15 minutes a day and pray and connect with each other, then uh, that might be one of the ways that sees us through. All right, I think that is all the announcements. So first up, as we start uh, worship today, uh, Mike and Noel are going to be singing Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Whoops. <laughs> Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We now have, um, that was the first technical glitch of the day. I'm sure there'll be, might be a couple more. Uh, Mike and Noel are going to offer our uh, song of mercy, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Again, with penitent hearts and steadfast faith, 
to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now Leo Shea is going to read our first lesson. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirst for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these pe with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that people can drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is it is the Lord among us or not? The word is a lantern to your feet. And a light upon our path. And now Jerry McDonnell is home uh, with his kids, and he is going to offer psalm 95 though i think he has some sort of a leprechaun infestation going on come let us sing to the lord let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms for the lord is a great god and a great king above all gods in his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts, as your forebears did in the wilderness, at Meribah and on the day of Massa. When they tempted me, they put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years long, I detested that generation and said, this people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. I don't know if we can recover from that, but let's, <laughs> let's try. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? 
Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? <clears throat> Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see you are a prophet. <coughs> Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with the woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? <clears throat> Excuse me. Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. <clears throat> the reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for... We have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. As I said at the beginning of this, I'm having some issues with my throat, so <clears throat> bear with me. My sermon, my sermon keeps getting shorter <laughs> as I go on. <clears throat> Today we have uh, Jesus meeting the woman at the well. Last week, Jesus was meeting a uh, Nicodemus who was a chief rabbi, uh, a member of the, the Pharisees, a leader of the religious movement in uh, Jerusalem. And today it's a totally opposite um, encounter, not with someone powerful, uh, not with someone well-placed, but with this woman from 
Samaria, a Samaritan. We all know that Samaritans were like detested among the Israelites around the time of Jesus. And she's a woman and women and men just didn't mix in company as they do today. And so this was a strange meeting. And they meet at this well, this well that uh, is said to have been um, Jacob's well. Now, Jacob lived about 2,000 years before Jesus. So historically, we are as far away from Jesus of Nazareth than Jesus of Nazareth was from Jacob. Uh, just to put that in some context. So even in the time of Jesus, this was an old ancient well. And he meets this woman there and they start talking about water. And you can tell that the woman um, keeps thinking he's talking about the water in the well, but Jesus is talking about something else. In uh, the encounter, she says, Jesus says, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. And the woman says to him, <coughs> Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Again, she thinks she's talking about like really good water, like better than Avion, better than that like expensive water from, from Fiji. Like, like somehow he's going to bring in a pallet of water that's a better than Jacob's well. And she says, sir, give me this water. And of course, he's talking about not just regular water. He's talking about something metaphorical, spiritual. And of course, <clears throat> the first Christians reading John's gospel would have heard in this baptism. Of course, a water that's water, but a water that um, ushers in eternal life. But even though she doesn't quite understand what Jesus is saying, she still says, Sir, give me this water. A few chapters later, in the sixth chapter of John, <clears throat> Jesus feeds the multitudes, um, feeds the 5,000 with a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish, goes a long way. And then everyone's totally amazed. They just can't believe what has happened. And um, again, they're astounded at bread. And Jesus wants to talk to them about something that's like bread, but is metaphorical spiritual bread. He says, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. It is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven, from the bread of God. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they say to him, sir, give us this bread always. Do you hear that? It's the exact, exact same thing the woman says. The woman says, sir, give me this water. They say, sir, give us this bread. <clears throat> um, and both the woman and the, the people talking to Jesus there are thinking we're talking about like actual water and actual bread, like really good, like just came out of the oven Panera bread. But Jesus is talking about something larger. But even though they don't, they're not quite on the same level of Jesus, like in, in, in their speech, in their thinking, they still recognize in themselves that there is something that they need. And this thing that they need is something that Jesus can offer. And they, any word spoken to Jesus is technically a prayer. And, and their prayer to Jesus is, Sir, give this to us. I went back to the Greek of this verse because almost every translation of the Bible out there says, Sir, give us this bread. I wanted to know what Sir was. Sir is the common word kurie, where we get like kurie eleison, which sometimes you hear in the church. It just means Lord. What they say to him literally is, Lord, give me this water. Lord, give us this bread. It's a, it's a prayer. They recognize this need. They have a need. Jesus can fill it. And they pray that that need would be filled. We are living in this incredibly anxious, crazy, 
ridiculous time where like the news every day is just crazier than the last day. And we are going to continue to realize that our needs, we, we have needs and you know, we have, we have fear in us, we have worry, we have uncertainty, like we don't know what's happening. We, some of us had this desire to like help other people, but we don't know how to do it in uh, a way that's not going to endanger them. Like we, we feel this like whole, this need, and we don't know what to do. And so if there's anything that we can take from this gospel lesson, it might be simply to just like close our eyes and br turn off the television, turn off the terrible news just for a moment and just say, Lord, give me this water. Lord, give me this bread. And maybe that could be like our mantra for the day, for the week. Lord, give me this. I know I have this need and I know you can fill it. And I pray that you do. One last thing about this passage before I end the sermon is um, <clears throat> in the Gospel of John, this woman from Samaria who meets Jesus at the well, she's nameless. She has no name. In the Western church, that's like the Roman Catholic church and the Protestant churches, um, we've historically seen this woman as sort of like a sinner, you know, five husbands, like, and she's living with some guy that's not her husband. Like, we, we sort of see her as this, like, sort of shadowy figure. In the Eastern Church, the Russian Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox Church, they actually name her. They have a name for her. And they call her Saint Fotini. Saint, so this woman from Samaria is a saint. And her name is Photini. Photini is that same Greek word that we get like photon from or photo from. It means light. Our Eastern brothers and sisters call her Saint Light. <clears throat> Partly because what she does is she has this encounter with Jesus. She realizes she has this need. This need is filled by Jesus. And then she doesn't just like go back to her Netflix binge. She didn't just go home and like pull like, like what's in the fridge. She goes and she tells people she had a, a hope that was brought to her. She had uh, a blessing that was given to her. She like her, she had a need that needed filled and Jesus filled it for her. And so she told other people. She brought that hope to them. And then these, this Samaritan village that she's from, what John tells us is they come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. The rest of Israel at this point, no one believed that Jesus was the Messiah. They all thought he was like this strange guy running around talking and doing miracles. But this Samaritan village believed in Jesus because of the hope that he brought one person. And so while we have our mantra this week of Lord, give us this water, Lord, give us this bread, perhaps we could be inspired to be Saint Fotini in this dark time, that we could like spread not disease, not fear, not anxiety, but light and hope. Um, and faith and love. I mean, scary time, but scary times are also always opportunities um, to remember who we are and what we are called to be. And maybe we could be a little more like her. Amen. I wrote a uh, litany for a pandemic that's actually... Uh, our, our website kind of blew up this week, um, and there are churches all over the place that are <clears throat> apparently using this this morning. There's even a community of nuns, I think, that's using this somewhere. And um, so we are going to pray it. You can find the text at the stmarksbr.org slash bulletin, um, or you can um, just listen along as Chuck and Don Nill pray this litany for us. 
St. Mark's family. It's Chuck and Dawn. Uh, we have a litany that we'd like to share with you. God the Father. Have mercy upon us. God the Son. Have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit. Have mercy upon us. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy upon us. Spare us, good Lord. Spare your people. We you have revealed with your most precious blood. And by your mercy, preserve us through this crisis and forever. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from disease and illness, especially this coronavirus. Good Lord, deliver us. From all ignorance and apathy, and from all willingness to engage in activities that can harm others. Good Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart, from pride and a sense of invincibility. Good Lord, deliver us. We, your children, beseech you to hear us. O oh Lord God, look upon this world struck by a pandemic and drive us through this disease. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And may please you to strengthen the weak, the elderly, and those with compromised immune systems. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That this may please you to give health and comfort to all who are already stricken with this illness. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And may please you to give patience and grace to all those who are in quarantine or who, or, or who fear that they have already contracted the virus. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And may please you to surround those who are scared and fearful, those who are overcome with anxiety and worry. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And may please you to give wisdom and stamina all the scientists, biologists, doctors who are working on tests, vaccines, and treat, treatments. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And we please you to uphold all those who are treating and ministering to the sick. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And we please you to give to your people a heart of love to their neighbor this time and to look after those who are most vulnerable. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And we please you to support, help, and comfort those who are worried about getting this through this time financially, and whether they will have unemployment when this passes. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And may please you to help our young people grow in wisdom and knowledge, even as schools and universities are closed. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And may please you to heal the sick, lift up the stricken, and open the airways of those who have difficulty breathing. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. And may it please you to receive into your bosom those who have died from this disease and gather into your arms those who grieve. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech you to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Amen. Amen. We remember those on our prayer list, especially Will, Andrea, George, Michael, Allie, Anne, Mickey, Ruth, Janine, Steve, Pam, Chip, Stu, Norm, <clears throat> Jean, Jonathan, Alfred, Connie, Jane, Carl, Neil, Sarah, Carmen, Julie, Madeline, Lexi, Bill, Jack, George Hall, Martin, Courtney, Matthew, Dave, Josh, John, Megan, Stacy, Mike, Mike, Jim K, Paul, Ruth, Lydia, Les, Catherine, Janet, Nick, Bobby, Carol, Julie, Ann, Marilyn, Shelby, Sebastian, Nancy, Asia, Jan, Jeff, Chi, Brian, Stephen, Melissa, Michael, Andy, Marty, Stuart, and any others we pray for now.
We pray for those serving our country at home and abroad, especially Andrew, Christopher, Garrison, Richard, Stephen, Patrick, Esteban, Jeremy, and Dan. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Robert Phillips, Kristen Hauser, Julia Sanchez, and Lauren Corson. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all so much and uh, have a blessed day and a blessed week, and hopefully see you back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. for morning prayer.